My name is Pallavi and I'm interviewing people across the world to understand how to be an expert general. Yes, I my name is Regeline Sabat, but I prefer Gigi for short. I'm a first generation Haitian American, motivational speaker, author, life coach, the host of Walk With Me podcast, and the CEO and founder of Life Service Center of America LLC. And actually this week I'm actually launching my second book titled God First. Yes, so I'm super excited about that. And uh, my first book, Walk With Me, just hit number one on Amazon. So I'm truly grateful for the folks that got their copy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I did see it. Um, so that's your LinkedIn banner, right? I, I did see that. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> How does it feel to hit number one? Fantastic. And I could not have done it without God. I, I know it's God. So I'm truly grateful. So that's why the second book is titled that. Well, essentially, the second book is titled God First because I want to raise awareness in regards to the importance of keeping God first place in our lives. That is not out there enough. We don't have enough awareness in regards to that. And here's the thing. I have found, I'm putting my sociologist hat on right now, that this is because God is not first place in our lives, that we have all the issues that we have in society. We would not have all these issues in society if God were put back in his proper place, which is, which is first. Now, let me back up here a little bit and tell you a little bit more about me. Now, my parents came to this country from Haiti around 35 years ago, and they instilled in my brothers and I the importance of obtaining an education. So I did. I attended the University of Central Florida. I got my BA in political science, pre-law, and sociology. Hence the sociology hat I just put on. And <laughs> then I pursued a degree in, in law. But here's the thing, while in law school, I became the SBA president, the Student Bar Association president, but little did I know that I was being abused at home. So I got the shock of my life when I almost lost my life at the hands of an abusive partner. And here's the thing, I'll never forget, I had just got done studying and here I was on the couch handling SBA business. So I, I'm almost strangled to death. And here's the thing, I'll never forget when I tried to get up, I couldn't even get up. When I tried to get up, I fell flat down on the ground. I was like a vegetable. I couldn't even get up. And here's the thing. I raise awareness now today that, you know, strangulation is the number one cause of death in, in those type of relationships, domestic violence relationships. And not enough awareness is out there in regards to that. And I'm actually hosting a domestic violence panel um, coming up this Friday, uh, the 20th of November at 6 p.m. I think... Um... I think it's wonderful that you brought up the topic of domestic violence, because even here in India, it's quite prevalent. But uh, like you said, you know, when it comes to awareness, there isn't much and there isn't uh, a good amount of, well, what should I say, that there aren't enough resources to help those people out of these situations. So like you mentioned, the panel discussion, I'm sure that it would really help other women or men who need that kind of support. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. We have actually both man and woman. And also we have an individual who was in a homosexual relationship where he's going to discuss that it also happens to individuals who are homosexual. And also too, we are going to touch base about all aspects of domestic violence. So I just spoke with an individual the other day who wasn't aware that they went through domestic violence because they were told that, you know, it's only physical. That is not the case. It's not just physical. We're going to focus in on that and raise awareness that it can be emotional. It can be financial and so much more as well. And then the PTSD that comes with that situation occurring in someone's life. Absolutely. I mean, uh, that's great. It, it sounds like a very well thought discussion and uh, very inclusive. I, I love that. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to shift gears a little bit and ask you, what is it like to be a first gen uh, Haitian American? So, you know, how has it been? Yes, great question. So essentially, I have found that there are other, you know, minorities in this world, of course. And I would say definitely too that, you know, a lot of folks, they don't really tend to look at me as a minority individual. They just, they treat me as anyone else. And I would say that, continue to do that, continue to do that with other folks. If you know someone is from another minority, because at the end of the day, we're all the same. It, it goes for anything else. We all bleed the same, same thing. We all get an education, same thing. It's, we're all the same in, in regards to being human beings and we bleed the same, that's what I mean. But 
we are all unique in different ways. <laughs> Definitely. So uh, I just like to know, was there something that you wanted to be as a child? Because, you know, you have worn so many different hats, but was there a particular uh, dream job that you had while growing up? Yes. So essentially as a young girl, I always wanted to be a teacher. I'll never forget. I would always have the desk and I would have the pencils, you know, the paper and everything and the board like I do right now in my office, actually. And I always wanted to be a teacher of some sort. And I'll never forget someone told me you are a teacher today in regards to what you're doing with motivational speaking and, and training as well all across the world. And I said, wow, you're right. But here's the thing. Growing up, I, I got really into the law as well, and hence why, you know, I pursued a degree in law. And also I made a promise to my great aunt that I will obtain that degree. So no matter what happened, you know, in regards to domestic violence, that's something that I'm still going to obtain. Hence, I still have a year left. I'm going to complete that. And when I do, that's not going to be my main focus. My main focus is to serve God's people. So essentially, I can provide legal advice and still continue to serve God's people on this new platform he has given me. I think that it's incredibly brave of you to uh, manage to, you know, come out of something like that, out of such a situation and go on to help other people. So uh, again, you know, just going back a little bit to what you said that you wanted to be a teacher and in a way you are because you're now a motivational speaker and uh, among other things that you do. But how different would you say it has been? How different would you say your professional journey has been compared to what you dreamt of as a child? And what were the different factors that you think were involved in helping you uh, build a career of this sort? Wow, fantastic question. So my aha moment and my life transforming moment was that moment where I almost lost my life. That was the wake up call for me, essentially, I look at it, I'm not supposed to be here, right? So everything I have done from the time that happened to now is because I, I, I'm a, I'm, I woke up in a whole different light. God led me to a whole new path. And essentially we go back to God knows the plans that he has for us. So after I almost lost my life, here I am, I go to Andy Audate's progression conference. And then from there, I go on tour with Andy to Texas and LA and I become a speaker after going through his Elite Presenters Academy. I, I, I was already a speaker, but I became a better speaker. And I say that because essentially growth is truly the beauty of life, right? We, we all need areas where we need to continue to grow. So essentially I'm still growing daily and so is everyone else. And here's the thing. After that, I, I spoke all across the world as I'm doing now. I launched my company, Life Service Center of America, my book, Walk With Me. And now my second book in the same year titled God First. And essentially, I tell people this all the time. People say, how are you writing two books in one year? This is because I'm telling you right now, I almost lost my life. But these books would probably not be on the shelf until 20 years later from now, right? But then that would be a whole different book, right? But this is the thing. God knows the plans he has for us. Essentially, God knew his purpose for me, hence why I'm still here and I'm grateful to be here. I love that. Uh, I love that you're grateful for the life you're living and not just for the achievements but also for the challenges that you had to face because um, essentially like you mentioned you know it's it's a balance of both of these things that make us who we are uh, so Gigi you mentioned the life service center for America so I would just like to know a little bit more about it what is the kind of work that you've been doing with that and during the journey of coming up with this concept did you have a mentor to guide you or was it something that you came up with all by yourself? I love that question. So my mentor was God. And I'm telling you right now, God is the one who directed me to that. Because essentially, again, it's something that, you know, he always brought to my attention. But again, because I thought this is the thing, you can think that you're on that path, right? That correct path. But he will, he knows the plans he has for you. So he will take you on that path that he has for your purpose to fulfill. So essentially, when I come out, I said, okay, God, so this is what you need me to do now. You need me to begin this business. What are we going to call this business? And he literally gave me the words to put Life Service Center of America, LLC. It came to me like that one day. And this is the thing. 
God knows the plans he has for us. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn and on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching How to Be an Expert Generalist.